What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and welcome back to Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door 100% Walkthrough Part 10. In our last episode, we defeated Dupless and got ourselves Vivian, one of the shadows, but now she's no longer a shadow. Now she's now she's she's our friend now. Okay, cool. As soon as we head out the door in the rogue port sewers, we get an email. Aha! Uh -huh. My dear Mario, I finally learned what the legendary treasure is. It is the spirit of a demon. The x knots plan to use its power to take over the world. They're collecting the crystal stars so they can open the thousand year door and unseal the demon spirit. Those same crystal stars can also be used to reseal it. You must not let them get to the crystal stars. Please Mario, you must put a stop to their horrible plans. Princess Peach. Before we continue on with our journey, we have a few things that we need to take care of. Heading back up to Rogue Port here on the west side, we're going to make our way into this right house over here. You may have gone through these houses and explored a little and seen some stuff, but fun enough over here, if we go ahead into tube mode and head down this little chute, head out the back, we can get access to this Shine Sprite. To exit here, we're gonna be entering back into tube mode and going through this hole, which puts us into this person's dresser. I'm not too sure how you've never felt that breeze before whenever going to get, you know, cutlery or whatever from that drawer. Now heading to the east side of town, by the way, there's some new badges over at the lovely house of badges, including the head rattle, the damage dodge, and the soft stomp. All of them we can get other places throughout the game. But here on the east side of Rogueport, we're gonna be using Yoshi to go across this bridgeway. It, it, Heading on top of the roof, getting onto Yoshi, going across the roofs, and then over here, we have this chimney that looks very tubular-like. Let's become a tube, hop down here. What do you blokes want? Uh, I want to go into your back room and steal your treasure. Thank you so much for that shine sprite. That is shine sprite number 21. Excuse me, sir, can you let me out of your house? Thank you. Let's go ahead, head into the rogue port sewers. We're immediately gonna be going into this pipe right here on our way to sub level two. We're gonna go ahead, sneak through the fence and you may have gone through these bars before and seen this room and wondered, you know, what it was all about. Well, now that you have Vivian as a partner, you can use Vivian to hide underneath the ground and make her way to the other side of these spikes. I just noticed now that Vivian goes underground and comes up significantly faster than she did in the original game. And these spikes come up every four seconds. So after the spikes go away, count one, two, three, and then on the three, I recommend diving back underneath the spikes. And then after the spikes go away, continue that again till you make your way to the end over here, which is the spike shield badge, which makes it so Mario can jump on top of enemies who are spiky. This is what was required for you in order to use the jump man badge. So if you want to do a jump man build, you could get that badge from Charlie 10 right now. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and we're clear. From here, let's head inside of this warp pipe and make our way over to the thousand year door. And now with five partners, they kind of make like a little, a little V with Mario at the top or an inverted triangle. And let's see where we are heading next. Okay, the ocean is colored in. And over here at the bottom left, it looks like there's a cave with a palm tree and a skull. And there's a crystal star there, so it looks like that's where we're off to. That was written in Princess Peach's email. The legendary treasure is actually the spirit of an ancient demon. And those fiends want to use the crystal stars to open the thousand year door and resurrect it. How bone chilling. Sadly, it does seem to be consistent with what I've uncovered. What have you found, Professor? Hmm, this is rather long, so you best listen well. Are all of you ready? And you there, up in front of the screen, you listen up too. Maybe I'm missing something, are you talking to no one? <laughs> oh, never you mind. Don't worry, such trivial details, just listen. The great cataclysm that destroyed the city, which once stood here, may refer to this demon. It's said that the seven crystal stars were actually created by that monster, and that this thing used the power of the crystal stars to try to control the world. According to legend, the demon was defeated in the end by four heroes, but only the beast's physical form was destroyed. Its spirit could not be eradicated. So the heroes used the crystal stars, which they had stolen from the demon, and they sealed its wicked spirit within the Palace of Shadows, locked behind the Thousand Year Door. From this, I gather the crystal stars cannot distinguish good from evil. So if they're all united, they could either seal away or resurrect the demon. 
It seems that who wields the crystal stars determines if they're used for good or evil. Does anyone think it might just be better off to destroy them once and for all? That was my first thought too, but further research suggests we can't do that. There's a slight possibility that Thousand Year Door is weakening. It seems that the Crystal Stars hold the power to seal the beast for a thousand years. So once a thousand years pass, the power to keep the door sealed shut will fail. And unfortunately, this year may be the thousandth year. In other words, we must be ready for the demon's return even if the x knots fail. Oh, then I guess we better find the rest of the Crystal Stars if we want to seal that demon, huh? Where do we start? According to the map, it appears to be somewhere on Keyhaw Key. I'm not too familiar with the place, but I've heard countless unsavory rumors. You know, the usual stuff. Vengeful spirits of hatred, evil curses, things like that. And I'm sure the sea salt's down by the harbor no more. You should head there first. Hope you're ready for the Jack Sparrow episode. Very first thing after speaking to Frankly, let's head over here to Merlin the Wizard and upgrade our new partner, Vivian. Which, even after upgrading her, we have an excess of six shine sprites. Nice. We have two new troubles that we can take care of here at the Trouble Center. Trouble number 16, the elusive badge by question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm after an elusive badge, must explain in person. Meet on the roof of Zesty's house in the Rogueport Square. And on top of the roof, oh, it's Miss Meows. I've done all I can to find this one elusive badge, but I failed at every turn. The badge is hidden in Hooktail's lair. Of that much, I'm sure. I went to check that room after I heard you defeated Hooktail, but nothing. I did hear rumors to find this badge, one has to use the wind. If your enchantment from Mer Lee the Wizard wore off, like mine did during the last chapter, probably a good time to head back and get a re-up from her. 50 coins, special path, thank you very much. And just a friendly reminder, we are going to be going there via the Petal Meadows way, not the warp pipe to Petalburg since it's since it's much faster to just head through this warp pipe that we did at the beginning of the game. It drops us right out here, right next to the Sun and Moon Stones, and our fastest access to Hooktail's Castle. And seems like a great time to remind people that you should have the first attack badge equipped on that allows you to defeat enemies when you're out in the wild. So this guy, as long as we do a first strike to him, we, uh, we don't have to fight him at all. He's just defeated. That works if you jump on him or if you happen to use your hammer. Boom, defeated. While you are here in Hooktail's castle doing this trouble, you're gonna be passing by this jail cell room. And if you come over here and you ground pound the ground, you could get this hidden star piece. I mean, at least you didn't come here only for this star piece and you came here for something else, right? That's, you got that going for you, which is nice. You know how to get to Hooktail's room, right? In Hooktail's castle. Just go all the way up as high as you can, up all the elevators, then to the big spiral tower. You know what you're doing, right? I don't need to go through detail. You got this? Great. Here at the top floor of Hooktail's castle, as you walk forward, you're just gonna be stopped. You just can't go any further. Go ahead, take Flurry out and have her start gusting forward to reveal this chest right here with the elusive badge, the one that Miss Meows is looking for. So let's go ahead and bring this badge to her. Great news, we only have to come to Hooktail's castle one more time throughout the entire game. And it's for something that's uh, on the first floor. It's going to be super accessible, so this, this is the furthest we have to go. Make it our way back to Miss Meows. Hmm, that face doesn't mean you found the badge. Yeah, you couldn't like smell it on me or something? Well, this is certainly the badge I was looking for. Oh my, yes. Now, my sweet, promise to hear me out without getting mad. You see, I was the one who hid that badge. It was a little game of mine. I have to apologize. But I knew you would find it, my handsome cheese hunk. You may have even more badge finding skill than I do. I just thought of something. Perhaps I should just travel with you from now on. What? Because, mm-hmm, I'm sure to find lots of badges that way, don't you think? Now, about that reward, let's see. Take this badge that you managed to find, but I expect you to lead me to more. The Attacks FXB badge, which makes Mario's attacks sound meow mousy. Now, let me formally state that you will now enjoy the pleasure of my company. This is Mario's kiss number seven. Miss Meows has the ability to tell you if there's hidden treasure nearby. Uh, and if you're really close, she does a backflip, but you don't need to worry about that because I'm going to tell you where all the treasure is. The most important part of Miss Meows actually has to do with her ability kiss thief, which means that anytime that you see an enemy holding an item or a badge in battle, you can steal that item or badge just by doing this command, which only costs two FP. Very reasonable. Plus, with all the extra shine sprites that we have, we could go ahead and upgrade her right away at Merlin. Shazibi. Shazubi. 
Trouble number 17, Seeking Legendary Book by Zest T. I want you to find a legendary cookbook for me. It's in a pretty scary place, so there's no way an old gal like me could get it alone. Wait, Zest T is a woman? The toad that demanded that you replace their contact lens? No idea. Remember back at Creepy Steeple, soon as you entered, there was that hidden room that had like the piano and that shine sprite in there, and there was that cookbook? Well, you already have that cookbook in your inventory if you've been playing along with my walkthrough. You could check by going to gear, useful items, and you'll see the cookbook in there. I mean, yeah, now I'm kind of seeing the lipstick and the big white hair, which I thought was just Beethoven-y, but I guess it's, you know, old woman-y. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Rumor has it you instantly become a better chef by reading his book. Unfortunately, it's an old book that's hard to find. Stores don't carry it. But I've recently heard that someone who used to live in Creepy Steeple had a copy. There are many secret rooms in Creepy Steeple, so it's moldering there somewhere. I just have to get my hands on that book and read it. Help me out, stumble bum. Well, here you go. Ah, that's it. That's the book by Maitre Delish. Give it here, quick. I've got it now. Just glaze a mushroom with honey syrup for a yummy honey mushroom. Brilliant. Now we can use recipes that require two ingredients. Now, now that's some book. Talk about effective. Thanks, Mr. Staggers. Take this as your reward. It's a honey mushroom. Now I could use recipes that require two ingredients, so just ask me any time. I'm really going to put my soul into it and cook with a vengeance from this day on. This changes how many recipes you can cook in the game. From eight to the entire... Uh, how many are there? 57. Oh, by the way, if you happen to still have that gold leaf in your inventory from Creepy Steeple, we want to cook it here using one item. One gold leaf. And this is going to make zest tea, as in T-E-A, zest tea, get it? That now makes a total of nine recipes and there's only going to be one more recipe that requires only one ingredient, but we can't make it until almost the last chapter of the game. Every other recipe is going to require two ingredients and I am going to wait until we have money being much more plentiful before we go about doing all of that because it is costly. And we don't even have access to all of the different shops yet. Speaking of costly, there's also going to be a collection of Luigi books. This one being Super Luigi Book 1. Uh, we're also going to wait before we buy all those because there's a lot of them and they are costly. Now it's about the time that we get started on Key Hall Key. First thing we're going to do is make our way inside of the inn slash bar and then go ahead and speak to uh, this flamboyant guy with the big old red rock in front of him. And what do you want, eh? You ask about? Ah, I am called Flavio. I am, how you say, a trader. The richest man in Rogueport. Monetary wealth gains me freedom, yes, and the freedom gives me wealth of spirit. And yet, why is it that a man whose life is unchanged must always long for yet more, eh? What is it I'm missing in my life? This tears at my very insides. I must know, what do I lack? Um... Probably thrills. Thrills, you say? Ah, I suppose one does need some thrills every now and then. There is nothing like the feeling of being alone on a mountain, shivering to death. Ah, no, foolish Flavio, not chills, you say, man. What I need are thrills. Wait, hold the horses, that is it? Now that I'm thinking of it, I once heard the treasure of Cortez, the pirate king. Yes, this is the answer. Oh, such happiness for me. A hunt for pirate treasure. Why, that just shrieks of romance and thrills and emotion and even money. Do you not know the tale? The Pirate King's treasure, hidden on Key Hall Key. Ah, well, tell say that the Pirate King Cortez hid his hoard of pirate booty there. For years, treasure hunters and ruffians have gone there in search of the loot, but not a single one of them has ever returned. Oh, the horror makes my back tingle. People here whisper that the ghost of Cortez attacks all who seek his treasure. Eek. It is because of those very rumors that people no longer go to Kihal Key. But that will not stop Flavio. The treasure is there, yes, and I am going to prove it. For I am Flavio, trader extraordinaire, millionaire, sailor of the seven seas. You're a millionaire? What is that you're saying? Talk of legendary treasure? Here beneath Rogueport? Why talk such craziness? There isn't anything like that in this dull armpit of a town. You cannot be believing each stupid rumor about treasure some street urchin spews out. No, 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 no. Now what madness comes bursting from your mouth? You have a treasure map. Well, hand it over. Rather, I mean, show me. You are having a joke. I mean, this map leads straight to Kihalki. You swine, you mean to steal my treasure out from under me. You awful, awful man. Well, 
Now I'm confused. You were looking for things known as the Crystal Stars? But now that I'm thinking, a star-shaped stone was said to be in Cortez's hoard. Perhaps I could sell it for a staggering amount of cash? Yes, that would be... Ah. Uh, Stop such thoughts, Flavio. What you need is romance, thrills, and emotion. I cannot ignore what this business before me suggests. This must be fate at work. Flavio shall go with you to Kihaki. And of course, the crystal star is yours, yes, but the rest of the treasure is mine. Huh? You must repeat that. Flavio's ears are plugged. Do you have no ship? Ha 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 ha. You unfortunate foolish man, do you not know who I am? I will have a ship ready in no time, and it will be massive and glorious. Splendid, splendid, splendid. Let us begin preparations immediately, shall we? I will volunteer myself as our intrepid leader. Yes, and you will be the captain. Ah, danger and adventure tickle my nostrils. Come to the harbor right away. I'm going to bring my stone with me. Bye. By the way, I just kind of winged Flavio's voice, so it, it may be inconsistent going forward. I know that it was just kind of like a mix of many different sort of accents in there. Oh, yeah. Wow, this ship kind of really appeared out of nowhere, didn't it? Hi, Flavio. Ah, uh, yes, so it is you. Ah, well, sadly, a slight problem seems to have popped up. But feast your eyes on the outrageously fantastic ship. She is a fine vessel, no? She is the SS Flavian, the queen of the countless ships in my personal fleet. The royal majesty of her hull, the pomp and circumstance, none may compare to her. Ah, behold the elegant curve of her prow. She cuts through the very soul, don't you agree? But she is not just a beauty, she is a savage beast on the water. Tops among sailboats. But above all, I tell you, this proud ship can? Ah, uh, yes? Did you, did you speak? Yes, 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 of course, the problem has sprung up. Uh, I had completely forgotten about it. This says Flavian, she bewitches me. Yes, well, here is the issue. We have no navigator. He ran off the dog. The navigator, of course, is the highest ranked helmsman. They steer ships, you know. Now here's the real problem. The waters around Kiholki are deathly dangerous. We need an absurdly skilled helmsman as a navigator. It is a, how you say, a pickle. Oh, Flavio. Who are you talking up there, sir? You don't mind me saying I might have a solution. Do not tease me, Papatch. You may solve our problem and spit it out already. Well, sir, I've heard him talk some fame. No legendary sailor living in Rogueport. Yeah, I think his name's Admiral Bobby, a salty old sea dog by all accounts. But he said to have Elmsman's touch, sir, he can make any ship bow to his will. Thing is, there ain't no soul seen him on the seas of late. Boss a boom! Problem solved. Let us scout out this Bobbery fellow and get him on board. As is customary, my captain will handle all negotiations. That would be you, Mario. Does that sound fair to everyone, does it not? No complaints, aye, sir. Hey, sounds fair. I'm on board. Huh, the guy who's not on board says that he's on board. Then he is decided. You must find this Bobbery and bring him here. Admiral Bobby, yeah, 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 I know him. You know that house just past the wall in the eastern part of town? That's his. But I think both you and he would be better off if you just let him be. Hop on top of Yoshi, make your way across this pathway, past the bridge, up to the top, up to the roof, hop in down here, and then through that chimney that's just kind of out of frame into this house. Uh, but if you've done it already, then you can just hop in through the door. And let's go ahead and speak with Admiral Bobby. You seek Admiral Bobby? Yeah, I sure do. Never heard of the gent. Take your search elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so now that we know that that's not Admiral Bobby, but the bartender says it's Admiral Bobby, we have a little bit of a disagreement here. How about we go talk to Flavio and report back and let him know what the current situation is? You found someone who matches Bobby's description but claim he is not him. Strange. I would ask someone who is knowledgeable about the neighborhood about this. Now, heading back and talking to Admiral Bobby, drop the axe, Super Stash. We already found out that you're Admiral Bobby. Humph. What, Poppycock? Tell me what would you want with me if I were this chap? You say your ship needs a navigator and you want me to do the job? Hmm, so sorry, but you'll have to look somewhere else. I shall set upon the sea nevermore. But that's just not cool. You wanted me to beg or something? Is that it? You have to come along. Only you can get us safely to Keyhole Key. Awfully sorry, dear fellows, but when I say no, what I mean is no. What's the next move, Chief? The Salty Dew is going nowhere fast. I can't figure this guy out. What's his beef with the ocean, anyway? Know what we ought to do? Go find someone who knows what this dude's deal is. It pretty much ends with talking to the bartender here. The real question is, are you folks really sure you know about Bobbery back on the water? Admiral Bobby's tale is sad. Awfully sad. You'll probably end up crying, but I'll tell it to you if you really want me to. Please do. I could take it. In that case, get ready. Bobbery's tale of woe goes something like this. Bobbery was once married. He had a wife of enduring beauty named Scarlet. The two of them were madly in love, the sort of love reserved for fairy tales. Now Bobbery was a renowned sailor. He was away from home for long periods. Scarlet never complained, though. 
and always waited faithfully for Bobby's return. And Bobby, his eyes never drifted. He only loved Scarlet truly and deeply. So they lived and found happiness where they could, and all was good for a time. But not all good things can last. It was a particularly icy winter when it happened. Scarlet fell ill, a virus, a passing cold no one knew, but it soon turned serious. Bobbery was at sea on a long, lonely voyage, knew nothing of his bride's suffering. But by the time he returned, Scarlet had succumbed. She was gone. Bobbery, of course, blamed himself. My loving wife perished because of me. If I were not at sea, I could have nursed her to health. I could have saved her. He was overcome with such thoughts. They tormented him always, haunting his sleep. He has never gone out to the sea since. Gee, what a downer. I guess that's a pretty good reason for hating the ocean. You all know this tale now, so tell me, do you still want him to return to the sea? Honestly, we have no choice. Very well, I understand. If you're that determined, then I'll give you this. I just keep it very nearby in case of a situation. You got an old letter. The letter Scarlet wrote to Bobbery just before she departed. On her deathbed, Scarlet wrote Bobbery a final letter. You hold it in your hands. I don't know what's her name inside, but I could tell you what she told me as she lay dying. If I should succumb to this plague, and if my love should blame himself for my death, then give this letter to him, so he may hear my voice. It was her last request. But when I saw Bobbery in misery, trying to forget the pain as he mourned his wife, I just couldn't bring myself to present this letter to him. I've regretted it ever since. Take this letter, and do the deed I was too cowardly to do. Take it to Bobbery. Listen, Polly, thanks a ton. We'll deliver the thing. You feel better, okay? Let's roll, Gonzalez. Ah-ha! Uh -huh. Hi, Bobbery. What? All by Blabberton's beard, not you again. No matter how many times you entreat me, my stance is firm now away with you. What about this? Pardon? A letter, you say? F for me? What? Scarlet, this is Scarlet's handwriting. My love, if you're reading this letter, then I'm no longer by your side. Because fate has stepped between us, I have decided to write you this letter. If you're reading this, I must have passed away while you're out at sea. I can only assume that you will blame yourself for it, my sweet Bobbery. Although my life was short, you gave me more than a lifetime's worth of joy. Though you will mourn, I beg that you remember that time, like love, is a tide. You are one with the sea, as you were one with me. Do not lose both of your life's loves. A, a thousand pardons, but may I have a moment alone, if you please? Yes, love. I was happy. My sweet, sweet Scarlet. I love you still. Now then, you were looking for a navigator, I believe, bound for Key Hall Key? Humph. If you think an old sea bomb like me is what you need, then let's shove off. Off to the harbor we go. My men have already loaded our cargo and supplies. Yes, preparations are complete. If you have no errands, we can depart at once. What shall you say? Uh, just to let you know, it's going to be a while before you can come back to Rogueport. So if there's anything you gotta do right now, which, if you've been following along this walkthrough one-to-one, -one, you have nothing else you have to do. But if there's anything else you have to do, you're not going to be back here for, like, at least four hours of, like, constant gameplay. So, yeah. Very well. To the sea. Rise anchor and set sails for thrills and emotion. And the romance and money our destination is Dread Keyhole Key. Wait up. Oh, yeah. That, that one last guy. All right, let's go, you salty seamen, and welcome to Chapter 5, The Key to Pirates. Now I'm going to let you know that there is a lot of dialogue now. That's Flavio writing in his diary and just kind of blabbering on. And then suddenly, in the middle of Flavio telling a very brave story about himself, the ship stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm working on it. Just wait a Goomba stomping moment, you scallywags. No one's behind me. Oi, quit shoving, eh? I'm working over here. I said quit shoving. I don't know why he came out, Brooklyn. Oh, arg!
the, 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 they're here. What's this ruckus now? Who's here? Will someone tell me what's going on? It's a whole bunch of fire ghosts. I believe these are called embers. Like the Mario enemy name. You know, they're upon us. The the pirate g g ghosts. All the rumors were true. Well, well, what do we do? We gotta get out of here. Uh, do not panic yourselves. This is just a dream. We're all having to awake now. Quickly move the boat. Ooh, spooky sounds. Oh, ghostly ooing thing. Are you really the savage pirate king? I help me. I help me. Buck up now, everyone. Remain civilized. Relax. Don't panic. Relax. Relax. I say. You simply must take it easier. What? Bobbery, no! Excuse me, listen everyone, if we can form an orderly line without shoving right after. Eee. Wah! Aye, we must get out of here! Abandon ship, every rich, marvelous merchant for himself! After some more diary entries, you find out that uh, they started to set up a little bit of immunity here on an abandoned island. Here we are, Key Hall Key. Before we even head forward, if you head over here to the left, you're gonna be finding a whack a bump. Hi. Hit him on the head. Direct hit. And you get a whack a bump. A lump of something replenishes 25 HP and FP. This is a very valuable item, I tell you that. So uh, it's up to you if you want to use it or cook it or sell it. Right about here, we want to do a ground pound for a star piece. Nice, that was our 70th one. Going to camp, uh, Flavio and Papatch is over here. They're gonna have a little bit of beef going on, trying to be all bigged with one another. But then as they go toward the jungle, three embers come into the camp and initiate a battle with Mario because they cower behind him because you know, Mario, Flavio said that he wanted thrills, and now he is cowering. Get used to that. Can't flee this fight. Can't stop this feeling. Wait, oh, oh, a puny is gonna throw me a coin. Thank you so much. I don't know why I'm feeling extra sappy. It's probably because of all that voiceover of the whole, you know, Bobbery's wife dying while he's out to sea. But this scene for some reason really resonated with me and this scene from Robin Hood. So I decided to make this meme and, uh, I feel like I feel like this this really encompasses this this whole scene right here. We've saved this. It's not much, but please take it. Your last farthing? Oh, little sister. No one can give more than that. Goombella, some info. Ember, HP of eight, attack of three. Of course, since this thing is a flame, touching it will hurt. Did a mama teach you that? Here's another thing you should know: something horrible is likely to happen if you attack it with fire. Looks like it's susceptible to ice or explosive attacks though, so that's something. If you get hit by a flame attack, you'll catch fire, so try to guard well. Obviously, you can't do any sort of jumping attacks on these guys. You choose to go and hammer them. Right now, my hammer's doing six damage. Uh, you, Goombella, can't do anything, so Koops can be more helpful. Okay, I'm starting to learn these times. I mean, that's good because there's gonna be a bunch of these guys. And there we go, a very not glorious GG. Too early to celebrate, no, there are surely more of them elsewhere. Someone must investigate the rest of the island. That's what it must be. The reader of this expedition, I, of course, should stay here on this brook, no argument. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, Mario, perhaps you could handle the exploration of this island. Yeah, sure, I, I figured, I figured as much anyways. Here you have a save block. The battle practice toad is over here. Here we have an inn. Resting costs 10 coins. That seems weird because, you know, it's just us here. It's not like you're, you know, losing out on commerce of other people. On this screen, if you head toward the camera, you're going to be finding yourself a star piece. You're going to be finding yourself a star piece right at the corner of the stage. At the east exit of town, you're going to be seeing this big rock here right behind it. We're going to be having another star piece. And as we head out east of town, this first piece of grass right here, go ahead and hit that. And there you go, star piece. As you leave camp, you're going to be seeing the green fuzzies, the same ones that you were battling against in Glitzville. You're going to see two trees over here. Hit the one on the left, and right here is going to be a keel mango that replenishes 5 HP. 
You could also go ahead and store that at the item shop because we're gonna need it later. But inside of this chest is gonna be the head rattle badge. This battle theme has like a nice steel drum to it. That's neat. They don't even give that much good experience for your current level. Over here, we're gonna have a courage shell. As you make your way to the right, you are gonna be coming across this brand new type of enemy, which is called a putrid piranha. 8 HP, attack of 3, defense of 0. It bites and attacks with super rank poison breath. If you were good up against the pale piranha plants back in the Bogly Woods episode, as far as guarding and super guarding against them, these guys have the exact same timing, so not that difficult. Over here, you're going to be seeing a question mark block on the, round, on the ground. Go ahead, hit that, but get on top of it and then jump up to reveal this hidden block. That's going to be pretty much mandatory for you getting across. Down here, before you start making your way up toward that sort of platforming area, if you come right behind this giant root, you're going to be finding a star piece on the ground over here. This is number 74. And as we make our way on up, we're going to need Yoshi to platform across this. Luckily, in the remake, they added this block right here. That way you can hit it and then there's going to be a spring down there and you never have to do that little platforming bit again. Especially because this jump with Yoshi to right there is not the easiest to do. There we go. And we got ourselves that shine sprite. Also, we are going to be going back and forth through this area quite a bit, unfortunately. Inside of this block right here is going to be a thunder rage. And now that we are all set with this screen, let's make our way over to the right. These cursed ghosts blast it all. Oh look, it's the three missing people who were shoved off of the boat. By blubbery's blotches, is that Mario over there? You're alive, old boy. Right, you came in just the nick of time. Get these two out of here this instant. Huh? But what about you, Admiral? You gotta get out of here too. Just leave it to me, eh? I'll keep these ghouls busy while you get out of here. Flee, that's an order. Let me do what I must do. Now away with you. Ag. <laughs> well, Bobbery here thinks it's the right thing to do, so what are we waiting for? Thank you, person, for picking me up and carrying me. Oh, Bobbery, please forgive our cowardice. We up and left you and everything was happening so quickly. Forgive us. Gone, eh? Excuse me, but I better be also be going. And hey, you, out there, looking at the screen. Yeah, I'm talking to you. It may be pretty obvious to you who I am, but no telling Mario, or else. Koops is looking at the screen. Um, is that guy okay, you think? Uh, listen, in 2004, breaking the fourth wall was, was pretty unique, especially for a Mario game. This is, you know, way before Ryan Reynolds was doing it all the time. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. Once you're on this bridge all the way at the very right, let's go ahead, use paper mode to drop down and get this ice power badge which basically allows you to jump on fire. Use the spring to spring on up, and up here we're gonna be finding a shine sprite. This is our 23rd. Also, the left of the bridge, let's go ahead down these stairs close to the screen, use Yoshi to platform across into this pipe right here, and we're gonna be put into the background with this coconut tree. Go ahead, hit it to collect a coconut. Hit it again to collect a second coconut. Use Yoshi to platform back across, and let's head to the next area to the right. Erg, 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 so this is how a Legend of the Sea meets a Zande. Eh? Well, it would appear as though these two embers are trying to fight Bobbery up here, and they're so preoccupied it makes it pretty easy for you to go ahead and get a first attack on them. Just want to remind you, if you're ever in a situation that you don't have a lot of flower points, which very well may happen here, especially after taking care of the enemies who suck away your flower points, don't be afraid to throw Koops in the front, who has a defense of one naturally after you upgraded him, and then just stick Mario in the back, use your special moves, especially now that you have enough star power to do it literally five times in a row, guard the attacks appropriately, and recover your HP and your FP as appropriate. Sweet Treat was the very first special move that you got in the game and, well, I mean, I did mention this before, but I figured I'd remind you. And hopefully you are doing this in order to keep yourself healthy instead of just constantly spending your money on items. Just saying. Oh, Merli, thank you for showing up at a pretty good time, bringing my experience from nine star points to 18. Still not a boss fight, but you know, better than nothing. But before you go ahead and knock down Bobbery, I'm pretty sure behind this rock right here is a star piece. This is right before the two statues and that little skull thing straight ahead. This was star piece number 75. Let's go ahead and get Bobbery out of this tree. Ooh, the pain of it all. Mario, old boy. Ugh, hack, earth. 
I guess those blokes got me a bit better than I thought. Mario, please hear my last request. I must thank you for taking me out to sea one last time. But there's one thing I need before I go to rest. Chaco Cola. It was saving me one bottle, my last memory of Scarlet celebrate reaching here. I saw it among the float sand drifting toward the island, so it must be somewhere. If I must have one sip before my final voyage- <coughs> Get me that chunk of cola, old boy. Thank you, I will now take uh, my Emmy for my voiceover work. Oscar? Emmy? I don't- You know what? Screw it. I'll just take a golden globe. I'm okay with that. By the way, after all that went on, the coconuts respawned. If you want more coconuts, how many coconuts do we need overall? You only need two all day. Uh, plus, we are going to need one in order to get a chuck of cola, so I might as well come over here and get ourselves a third coconut. And now we have to go all the way back to the very beginning of the area. Be sure to, once again, get another mango from the tree. I'm gonna go ahead and deposit these extra items in the shop, including the keel mango. I thought some jungle beast was snacking on you. Well, everyone is accounted for. Now, wait a moment. Are we still a man short? That's right. Bobbery sacrificed himself to save us from the ghost. Please, we've gotta go back and help him. Huh? What does it do say? Chuck a cola? Well, why would I have that? Er, but, er, yes, by the way, Flavio is merely curious. Uh, what do you need it for? What now? The animal may soon perish and wants to drink it as last wish? The Shaka Cola is part of my, er, I mean, our supplies, which we need to survive. So I will need you to find something to eat to replace this. On this, I do not budge. Hmm, yeah. I'm sure there's something on this island that would be a suitable replacement. Uh, you know all those coconuts you just picked up that you can't eat? Go ahead and exchange one with Flavio. Well, here you go. Take the Shaka Cola and give my regard to the Admiral. Flavio's treasured beverage, parentheses, actually it's Bobberies. Tell him to waft the bouquet, swizzle it gently, and savor all the fine fizziness. So now, we have to go all the way back. Huh? Sniff, sniff. Ah, that distinctive bouquet. You, you've brought it. Gulp, slurp. Ah, this glorious flavor, dear boy. It awakens the mouth. Oh yeah, that's right. He's in the middle of dying. Farewell, Captain Mario. Bonk him on the head. <laughs> Hop, hop, what, what? Yabbity, yabbity, pirates! Where are those pirates? Not quite with it yet, huh? What now? Oh, Mario, oh boy, it's you. You have adventures in the afterlife as well? Capital. Hey, you're still alive, you bozo. Oh, yes, well, really? This isn't a tropical paradise for fallen sailors? Oh, right. Now I recall, Mario, oh boy, we still have work to do. Bobbery is now on your team. And as you could probably imagine, he, as a bomb -omb, go boom. Okay, now we're gonna go and head to the right, and we're going to be seeing these two pedestals and this skull head. I say this rock looks like a fiendish grinning skull, and there's a spot you could insert something. Now we unfortunately have to go all the way back to camp. Once again back at camp, let's go over here and talk to Fabio. Flavio talks so much, I'm just gonna recap a bunch of the stuff that he says. After a little bit of dialogue here with Flavio, Bobbery is gonna say there was a rather odd rock in the far east of the jungle with a skull carved into it. Call it an old sea bomb's intuition, but that skull rock smells suspicious. Flavio, you old cash grubber, if you want treasure, why don't you go get it yourself? Yes, you have a point. Let us decide fair and square, shall we? Listen to me, everyone. Who thinks I should go along to investigate the skull rock? Everyone. Take him, please. Have fun, get that jerk out of here. Great. Flavio will join you for a short time. Flavio will just hop on your back if you hop on Yoshi and uh, you're, you're going. Anyways, let's head on all the way to the right. All the way back up, once again to the very end. Can we hit this for another mango? Sure can. Ah, now what is it? A dead end taunting Flavio with this dead endness. But hmm, is this, I think this is the Skull Rock Bobbery blabbered about. Well, it positively reeks of ancient secrets. Yes, let us plunge into this puzzle. This rock looks like a skull and hey, there's a spot in the eye where you could put something. Hey, Gonzalez, doesn't Flavio have a gem that might fit in the eye hole? You want Flavio to lend you something, is that is this correct? Now, what could I possibly have? Uh, skull gem. What, you want me to lend you the skull gem? You really, really need it? This is the heirloom of the house of Flavio, you know? Guys like Flavio don't just fall out of the sky, you know? But I suppose it's all right, because I am Flavio. He of such ludicrous wealth. But I'm just lending it, though. Do not dare run off with it. Do not make me dock pay. You got a skull gem. It's the pride of Flavio's family. Can it be set into the skull rock? Check out these mustachioid uh, rocks over here. 
Flavio is then going to be singing his song once again. Skull Captain casts his gaze. Red Jewel shines and plays. Boom Bassa Boom Festival. The Stash Brothers' best of friends, three times red stash, lands on his head. Blue stash his belly four times as whack. Let's hear the spy who works go boom. Definitely can't get a job singing. One, two, three. And then we're gonna bash him four times. One, two, three, four. There we go. Skull jam glows. Camera pans in. Boop. Bobbery, go on in there. Go go find something to blow up. Yay, we did it. Oh, such excitement. The cave entrance. Hmm? Huh? What? Ah, my skull gem. Mario, what were you thinking? That gem was part of the house of Flavio. And it lands right next to him. Oh. What a happy day. I have my skull gem back. My jolliness has no end. Now then, I'm sure you're all disappointed, but Flavio must be heading back now. I cannot let those back at camp worry about me further. You two understand, yes? So, let me know when you find that glittery treasure, all right? Straight ahead of us, we have the dungeon that we are going to be doing next episode. I hope you had so much fun going back and forth so many times here at Key Hall Key. We're going to be ending this off with 73 tattles, a total of 47 badges, 75 star pieces in total, 50 spent, 25 left over, so that is three quarters of all the star pieces in the game, 17 troubles complete, 23 shine sprites, and 9 recipes. Until next time, Austin John out.